You got it to Warp Up, KEXP 90.3 FM, live on the web at kexp.org. And I am Derek Mazzoni, your DJ and host. Thanks so much for tuning in. And it is with great pleasure to introduce the full band, the Nile Project, here. Thank you for being here. Wow. Thank, Thank you. For you. Thank you guys. Yeah. You guys played a wonderful show at Beanie Hall, and it is an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Would love to hear a song if you have it in you. Project live on Warp Up on KXP. You guys look like you're having fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're having a blast. Which is absolutely beautiful. So the Nile Project is more than a band. It's a, a concept. It's a message. It's what is it? Um, the Nile Project is um, a group of musicians. It's an idea. It's a collective. It's the. It's the idea that. In East Africa, even though we're neighbors, even though the Nile River connects 11 countries, um, we actually don't know each other that well. Mm -hmm. um, and so the project and the collective puts cultures next to each other, composers 
from seven countries are represented in this particular um, iteration of the collective. We create music together, and we're modeling the kind of relationship that we'd like to see in East Africa, okay. which is one of connection and conversation. And the, the record is um, Aswan, came out last year, two years ago, mm -hmm. and now you guys have had residencies. And in, in a sense, looking at, at your tour schedule and what you've been this is a dream come true yeah. <laughs> you guys you know it's not like a band where you just show up two hours before the you know you're exhausted you do a sound check you eat some horrible food and then you're on and then you're going the next day you're actually spending some time getting to know the communities sharing this knowledge educating students being part of a a, a broader dialogue how does that feel i mean um i i think you really hit the nail on the head it's it's a dream come true. I think that for a lot of the musicians in the collective, and, and I'll let folks speak for themselves, but you know, we feel that music is um, powerful and that mm -hmm. it has a capacity to ripple outwards in ever-expanding concentric circles of, of, um, of connection and ideas. And, and so it's been a pleasure um, on this tour working with university students, and, and we work with university students in East Africa as well, um, because they're really in a place in their lives where they're not just learning about the world, but they're eager to think about the ways that those ideas make real impact and how they can have an impact in the world around them. So the thing that uh, I found intriguing about this project is that often you'll have musicians such as yourself come to the West and perform, and you're up on stage, and there's this kind of like, oh, wow. And then you go back home and we don't know anything about that. But your residencies have been actually in Egypt, have been in an hour. So you're actually performing and speaking to this to the populations there. And how was that being received? How was that how how are you getting this out and what's going on? So so we've done three residencies so far. The first was in Aswan, Egypt in January of twenty thirteen, and the second was in Kampala, Uganda, which was January and February of two thousand fourteen. And mm -hmm. the third was just recently November of two thousand fourteen, uh, in Minya, Egypt. And the idea is that um, on the residencies, we're we're really engaged in the creative process. So all the music that you hear as part of the Nile project is composed, arranged, expanded upon um, in the actual two to three week residencies itself. So so it's a really really concentrated process, um, and it's a process where there's no leader. Um, rather, everyone is a leader. Everyone mm -hmm. is a teacher, and everyone is a student. Um, and the 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 way that we listen to each other, the way that we engage in improvisation in um, starting in small groups and twos and threes and expanding out there, bringing in four to five musicians and then to the whole collective for the full arrangement process and all under the incredible direction of <laughs> our dear Miles J, who's our musical director. And um, awesome. And, and we play in um, and we play in the residencies as well. We we play for the communities around. I think you know when Mina and I started this project, we we wondered you know what are people going to think and <laughs> because there's a kind of element of both familiarity and unfamiliarity, right? So if you're playing in Egypt, you know we we obviously have incredible representation from Egyptian musicians. So mm -hmm. an audience there might might grab onto aspects. Perhaps the song is in Arabic or the scales, the maqam are represented. Um, but then there's a Ugandan rhythm somewhere in there, or there's there's there are elements that come from the other Nile cultures that that change the song, that influence it, that that make it a uniquely Nile sound. And so then there's that element of unfamiliarity, like, well, I understand part of it, but I, there's another part of it that is unfamiliar. And that's what we hoped would create curiosity. And actually, the album Aswan was our very first ever concert. And what we discovered there was that... That's quite a bit of chutzpah. <laughs> Can it's you like, believe it's it? It's perfect. It's ready. Let's just go. <laughs> or or rather, we're a work in progress. Okay. And, and we're we're interested in the idea of learning and we can we can capture a moment and that was a very very special moment and the audience wouldn't let us go they were they just wanted to ask us questions like who are you and where did mm -hmm. you come from and what is that instrument and that kind of curiosity that mix of the unfamiliar and the familiar that leads to a kind of open door is what we found when we play for audiences perfect um there's a million questions and i want to get into them but uh one quick one harbible what does that mean Gerible. It means come closer to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we will. Uh, we'd love to hear some more music, please, and, and find out more if we can. The Now Project, live on Wopop, KXP, where the music matters.
the Nile Project on Wopop and KXP live in the studio. Um, that was amazing. Thank you. Uh, so give me the give me the history. Anybody could talk. It's okay. Whoever wants to speak to it. Like, how did this come about? Like, uh, everybody's a great musician. I read everybody's biography. So one, it's got to be something pretty phenomenal to have um, to convince all these musicians who have lives and other things going on to come together and here's the man the grand convincer <laughs> <laughs> what's going on <laughs> i just want to know um how this came like well how did this come from uh idea to actual execution oh. mina you could speak to that microphone so uh i think it, i think it, it was a combination of uh events it was uh you know it, it was a time when uh both maklit and i were coming back from our uh, respective countries, Ethiopia and Egypt, mm-hmm. and How'd to the Bay me? Area. We met in the Mission District where uh, Maklit was the co-director of the Red Poppy Art House, a uh, small art house in, in, the, in the Mission, and I had started a world music school there. Okay. So uh, so, so we had met seven years earlier, and uh, we were friends. We were in the same community. We were doing work that was very similar, um, both presenting... Uh, a lot of world music in the Red Poppy Art House, and I was working mainly in cross-cultural music education, okay. and providing space for people to learn any musical traditions they were interested in. Um, so, so, so it was, it was, you know, we were both coming back. Um, that was right after the revolution in Egypt. I mm-hmm. was thinking, you know, I want to do something that has to do with what's happening in Egypt, but I'm an applied ethnomusicologist, and there's a revolution. Like, how does that connect? And uh, and and uh, you know we uh, I went to an Ethiopian concert, ran into McLeod there in in Oakland, and that's where kind of like the aha so that was moment the Debo came. band, right? That was Debo band, yeah. yeah here, awesome stuff, so uh, Okay, perfect. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, so. But start. but to go from, um, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, this was like at a show. Let's do something like here, and you've got it here. You've got a full production schedule. You got a record out. That must be pretty. I mean, one, I would feel awesome, but also, wow, uh, how do you keep this? energy flowing and moving i think i think it was a combination you know it was uh meeting all the incredible musicians that that we're working with that mm-hmm. keeps inspiring us uh going to the nile basin and doing a lot of the work there and seeing how it resonates so deeply with a lot of people um i think you know this project wouldn't have come up if we were living in the nile you you it's, it's so big there mm-hmm. that you, you you don't get the perspective that you get if you live in the bay area and look at it from on a map and and see how all of this fits together S- but but when you go back there and you t- propose to people to work on something like this you see that it actually hits really uh deep uh with a lot of people because it kind of uh, the nile is an interesting uh, river because it really speaks to the identity of a lot of the people that live there but it's really hard to express your relationship with a river that kind of live, you know, like Seattle. Like, think how how do people express their relationship with a Puget Sound? It's it's um, it's not. They easy. go hiking. They drink yeah. coffee when it rains. <laughs> exactly. They throw salmon at each other. You know, <laughs> the regular things. So 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 it's kind of crystallized a lot of what a lot of people were feeling at the right point in okay. time. Okay. So the Arab Spring, what was going on in Egypt, and then the energy of that. But but at the same time, McLeod was saying that the there's a millennial history of various peoples on the Nile but there isn't much communication between them so is it because if you're in Egypt and you wanted to gr- bring in musicians from Rwanda or Burundi people would just look at you like why or how or how would that work well uh, did you need to be out to get a sense of perspective of it like I think I think you need to be out to draw that map to 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 draw the the line around the Nile basin mm-hmm. uh, if you if you're in you think of uh, Egypt as North Africa or the Arab world. You think of Ethiopia as, you know, East Africa. dead in the center of East Africa. And then you have all of Lake Victoria and Sub-Saharan Africa. So you don't really think of these connections as much. Uh, and once you get out, you start seeing, wait, this region doesn't, this, this, this region makes a lot more sense than, you know, the, the, the lines that we've put Got artificially it. on the map yeah, yeah, of yeah. Africa. And, uh, and then everybody just hears the Nile project and making sense of that region in a, in, in a vertical way as opposed to all these horizontal lines we've put on the map and it's just like you know bam it's just like it, it for mcleet and i to explain the Nile project it takes like two sentences you know you talk about the Nile project and people are like yeah no it totally makes sense why has this not been done before 
So it's uh, it was just like one of those. Perfect. And it's yeah. successful. So you caught fire. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Um, can somebody please introduce the band? And then I wanted to find out more information about the Nile Project. Where would I go? Sure. Uh, so maybe, uh, um, Miles, would you like to introduce the band? Our sure. musical director? Okay. <laughs> sure. Well, it's quite an honor to introduce this band. Thank you, Miles. Since we're in a circle, where do we start? Well, let's start with the vocalist you just heard from. This is Salamnesh Zemene from Gondor in Ethiopia. Salamnesh Zemene. Next, we have the co-founder of the Nile Project, Maklit Hadero, who's a Seattle local from time to time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, from Egypt, we have the lovely vocalist, Dina el -Wadedi. Uh, from Sudan, from Khartoum, and from Brooklyn, we have Al Sada on vocals. Uh, coming all the way from Rwanda, who she sings and plays a very unique instrument called the Inanga. This is Sophie Nizai Senga. Next to me here, our bass man, our Kembe man, our Umaduri man from Burundi. This is Steven Sogu. You're about to hear a song from him coming up next. In our percussion section, from Kenya, we have Kasiva Mutua. She's playing the Kenya drum, she's playing the djembe, and she plays many small percussion instruments too. From Uganda, on percussion, on Adungu, on Ntongoli, and Dingidi, Amadinda, basically, if they play it in Uganda, he plays it. This is Michael wow. Bazibu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Egypt, uh, from Cairo, actually, this is Hani Badeir. He's holding the Uganda long drum right now, but actually he's, well, since we all started, we swap instruments like crazy. But he's a great tabla player and rick player with us. And now, Ugandan percussionist <laughs> from awesome. Egypt, Hani Badeir. <laughs> Uh, on saxophone from Ethiopia, we have Jorga Mesfin. On Kaula, the end-blown Egyptian flute from Port Said, the uh, city on the edge of the Suez Canal. This is Nedir Ashar. And from Egypt, our youngest and newest addition to the band and all of our new best buddy, this is Mohammed Abu Zikri on the Oud. Perfect. Thank you for being here. This is awesome. So if I want to find out more information about, um, but first off, Miles, you were on tour with Yusuna Dur, the Egypt tour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. There's a lot of powerful energy here. And, <laughs> and, some, and so I am really honored to have everybody here. Thank you again. If I wanted to find out more about the Nile Project, if I wanted to support it, to get it out, how would I get that on the so internet? We, we have a website, okay. uh, nilproject.org. And uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, and you can support us through our website. We have a lot of more information about our university programs in East Africa, as well as all the plans for the for the Nile project. We're putting on a new album uh, in the next few weeks. We'll probably be launching a crowdfunding campaign. So a lot of that information is on our website, okay. and you can sign up to our mailing list. So this is your life now. My life? Yeah. Oh, it's been my life for three and a half years. Okay. It's a good life. <laughs> but it's everybody's life for the next four months at least. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, uh, now Project Live on Wop Papa Cakes. We would love to hear another song if possible. Thank you. 
Maguiza, Kumanara, Anna Bandio, Matsunini, Kawama Squadi, Makunzi, Kawama Squadi, Messen Utwa, Nagiranand, Nabatat, Nababi, Kornaruzi, Nagizangoni, Naruzi, Nakinuabura. Taleta, Mozambique tattoo, Rim the Cabiri Gata too, and on a soul. I am Project live on Warp Up and KXP. Uh, that was a big song at the show last night. You had people losing their minds. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, you got to tune to Warp Up. I'm Derek Mazzoni, your DJ and host. Thank you so much for being here. I'm here with Amina uh, Girgis, am I pronouncing that right, who is the co founder of the Nile Project. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you the, the, there's the music, which is beautiful, which tells its story, but um, in looking at your curriculum I guess would be the word for it there's a lot of stuff to cover here and yeah. and how uh, this is encompassing you've got many different cultures many instrumentation how do you get the message out about water cooperation <laughs> that which I love like musical collaboration and water collaboration throughout that and Nile and African identity imagining the Nile does can you speak to that a little bit like how do you weave that curriculum in through this because this is fun that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think it's fun. It's uh, so for us. It's it, the music is is, uh, is 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 really kind of you cannot divorce it from the mm -hmm. realities that we live. I think what's what's really special about this collective is that every single musician here has done a lot of work in community organizing mm -hmm. in being involved beyond their music in their society. Uh, so w when we bring everyone together, we're not just thinking about our music. I mean, we are definitely thinking about our music to make music that sounds good, but we also 
think about all the other issues that inspire us to make the music we make and that relate to our communities and where we where we come from so for us the the music is really kind of a megaphone that attracts people to to this conversation to see the nile as one ecosystem and open that gate into a world that we haven't really looked into mm -hmm. so much before so once you're curious you have a lot of questions and once you have a lot of questions you want someone to hold your hand and help you kind of wrap your head around the complexity of such a uh, an ecosystem that has a lot of issues and 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 what is your role uh, in in this ecosystem you, you know we figured out what we want to do uh, as our Nile project how we can contribute to the sustainability of the Nile that is uh, primarily cultural and social and political before it is environmental but there are lots of other people that are trying to find their in find find their entry point mm -hmm. and uh and 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 these workshops are meant to be an introduction to students to get them from the concert from that inspiration that they have when they see this music into all the other aspects so go from one side of the brain to the other mm -hmm. so so these workshops are all musically based so we start with musical collaboration but we talk about how our musical collaboration can relate to the way we can cooperate around water how can we use creativity uh, to focus on finding uh, solutions that fit, you know, all our needs, you know. So, so if we have a musician coming from Egypt and a musician coming from Ethiopia that want to make a song, how can they combine their music in a way that sounds good and that serves both their needs? This is exactly the same process that happens when people are trying to figure out solutions to their water issues. Um, so, so it's really kind of an entry point for anyone that would like to be more involved in Nile sustainability. Okay. Do you think, okay, so uh, Arab Spring happened, is happening, and a lot of my friends from North Africa, from the Middle East, that was an incredibly powerful moment for them. Some of them went, participated, others were just, just couldn't peel away from the television set. Um, people in the West, that was exotic and amazing, but once Gaddafi's done and Tahir's where is empty and it gets complicated with the Muslim Brotherhood and everything, the interest went away. It's, you know, it's no longer a soap opera. But the energy of that, that transformation, that alchemical energy, did that play a part? And you, you mentioned it before, but I'm wondering if it just played a part and everybody here that like, you're, whether you're in, in Burundi or Rwanda, your neighbors are going through a, a dramatic change uh, culturally and, and politically. Did that play a part in putting this together and making it work? Well, well, you know the 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 biggest issue I have with the Arab Spring is that it's it wasn't really Arab. It's still not Arab. I mean, I I think you know the there are more countries outside of the Arab world that are experiencing that spring mm -hmm. from three years ago than Arab countries. Um, it it may have started there and and people have kind of isolated it, but a lot of that same political social turmoil was happening in lots of other African countries and it's still happening mm -hmm. in lots of other uh, African countries and it's going to be happening in more African countries. So I don't think, uh, you know, people in the Nile Basin see this as just focused in the Arab world and is not going to go bleed everywhere. Um, it happened here in the U.S. with Occupy. It oh, happened yeah, in yeah. Spain. It happened, you know, so... so for us, I think what was happening was uh, not just a political revolution, but a cultural revolution. And you could really feel it in Egypt that a lot of people were kind of s looking into the the next era of an era where we're going to rebuild our relationships with our African identity. And a lot of Egyptians resonated with the Nile Project because they found um, you know, an outlet to kind of re-explore what it means to be African. Um, I imagine that similar... Um, you know, orientations are happening in other countries as well, in the Nile Basin and elsewhere. But, you know, we feel that there is a spectrum of society that feels like this, this speaks to them more than a lot of the old political discourses that they have yeah. grown up with. And I think that's kind of what is really important for us. I think also this music speaks to this population in the West here because this generation coming up right now it sees this music in a different light. It's not in the academy. It's not. It's like it's on YouTube. It's like it's the music people are their own generation is dancing to and having and enjoying. So it's not in that kind of like other space. It's actually here. And I think that's one of the reasons why you guys are going to be really successful. Thank you. Getting this out. Thank you. Now project on Wop Pop on KXP. We'd love to hear one more song.
صحيح جايز ما كانش الآلة يملى القلوب والعيوب جايز ما كانش الوجع عشش نوا Out project live on Warp Up on KXP. Thank you. Thank you. That was absolutely Thanks awesome. Thanks yeah. for having Please us. come back again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys are gonna be anyway. You guys are full lineup here. You're gonna be in Long Beach, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Folsom, Stanford. It's good. You're not. You're going warm, and then up <laughs> instead of going cold. You're not playing Edmonton or Calgary. It's like God. Um, so please come back again. I want to thank, um, who, where am I here? Uh, Scott, Justin, and Luke. I want to thank Eric Gonzalez, the amazing Tom Hall, Aaron Keating, and of course, John Kurtzer. This is Wopop KEXP 90.3 Seattle, where the music matters. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.